convex and concave functions uh, well they refer to the change in slope of a function change in slope of a function okay uh, let me just give you a brief idea about how do you get these uh, concave functions and what exactly are these concave functions let me just start up with one function such as this say this is an fx function hmm? say I pick up any two points x1 and x2 hmm? I pick up these two points x1 and x2 and uh, these are the value of the function these two points here which is fx1 and this is fx2 okay so say there is an interval a b and I've picked up x1 x2 belonging to this interval a b hmm? I've got the value of the function at x1 I've got the value of the function at x2 now supposedly if you join these two points so so this point is this point is x1 f of x1 and this point is x2 f of x2 this point is this clear now you join them by a line segment so you join them by a line segment these two points hmm? and here you take the convex combination of x1 and x2 say x hat is say lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 for any lambda belonging to 0 1 You pick up this x hat and you try to this is the point now the value of the function at x hat is say f x hat hmm? this point is let me just write it here this is f x hat what is the coordinate of this point which color I should use I want the coordinate of this point hmm? what are the coordinates of this point x hat and fx hat let me just write it with green yeah what are the coordinates of this point x hat and fx hat clear what are the coordinates of this point the coordinates of this point is uh, you remember the midpoint formula which you have this this is the line segment joining these two points x2 fx2 and x1 fx1 which is being divided into lambda 1 minus lambda see uh, you you are dividing this line probably into lambda 1 minus lambda you remember the cross-section formula not midpoint formula cross-section formula so according to cross-section formula uh, what should I call this as say x bar y bar according to cross section formula x bar would be lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 upon lambda plus 1 minus lambda and y bar would be lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2 
upon lambda plus 1 minus lambda. Now this lambda and minus lambda will get cancelled out and you have just this x bar as this and this is this. So the coordinates of the point are lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 and this point is lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2. These are the points which you have, your x coordinate and y coordinate. Now think about it. fx hat, fx hat, the height of this point, this point, this point, is greater than the height of this point, which is your y bar, which is just this lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2, that's right. But what is the value for fx hat? fx hat, x hat is what? Lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is greater than lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2. This is the definition and the formula for concave functions, okay, which you see probably in all books there, which is f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is strictly greater than lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2. This is for strictly concave functions, strictly concave functions. I'll just write it here for strictly concave functions. Hmm. If you write it for concave functions, okay, well if you write for concave functions, you will have this thing here also. Let me write it again for you. For concave functions, this will be for all x1, x2, belong to i and for all lambda belong to 0 1 f is a concave function if f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is greater than equal to lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2. I guess you should be writing if and only if here because the other side would also be true. Anyways, so that's not the point here. The point is that to understand that these are concave functions. Hmm? Now, as you could see for a concave function, the the line joining the concave function, okay, sorry, uh, line joining uh, any two points in a concave function is lying below or on the function. So I'll give you an example here. Supposedly, if this is the function which you have, fx, hmm? you have this function and you join the line segment here. Hmm? Now this line which you have uh, you have picked up any two points on the function and you join them by line segment. This line is lying below the function. Supposedly if you had the function like this supposedly if you had the function like this and you pick up any two points on this function, say these two points, and you join them by a line segment here. So this line lie exactly on the function. So this is also a concave function, but this is not a strictly concave function. Hmm? On the other hand, 
no supposedly if you had the function like supposedly how should i make this uh like this now if you pick up any two points on this say like this and this and you join them by line segment it will lie entirely on the function so this become a concave function not strictly concave function so this becomes a example of strictly concave function this becomes an example of concave function hmm? what are convex functions they are the opposite of what con concave functions are that is You have this is one function, this is another function. You pick up any two points on this function, see this and this, and you join them. by a line segment. So this line segment will lie entirely above the graph or on the graph. Why on the graph? Because it could even be if you pick up these two points say this point and this point and you join them by a line segment hmm? so it lies entirely on the set so oh sorry on the function so this is a strictly convex function and this is a convex function so for convex function the the definition changes a little bit uh -huh. so you have the other side of equality in inequality here so for a strictly convex function, it will be f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 lies entirely. Lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2. This is for strictly convex function. And if you have f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is less than equal to lambda fx1 plus 1 minus lambda fx2 this will be the definition for a convex function but why are we interested in them okay because we have to go a little step further in order to find out the optimal Okay, where does the optimal lies and that and their convexity and concavity helps us.